True state of Kings fans. What a predicament we've got ourselves into today with little King Croissant Carling. Nine years of age when sadly his father, King Labaget the Petulant, was slain from his own wounds. And there's someone in the comments quite rightly pointed out. It's probably a combination of the fact that a uh, lunatic gives a minor health penalty. The injury gives a minor health penalty. The fact that he was malnourished gives a severe penalty. All of these things were a perfect storm, all of which basically came from his pilgrimages and, and, his, and his devotion to the Lord, all of which killed him dead long before his time. And now here we are, uh, I, I think very arguably a chip off the old block with King Croissant bonding with his father through uh, the course of many pilgrimages. His father took him on pretty much all the pilgrimages he went after the kid was born, right? He's also friends with his mother, who I think is going to be a pretty strong influence on the little guy so we've, we've got to try and play the character of course but we've got to recognize that really both his mother and his father are going to have a, a, a big positive influence so big aspects of both of them should come into this character and i think we should carry on down that path of zealotry because clearly the kid is as has basically spent that has been the major part of this kid's life his pilgrimages now I have to defend myself here, and I expect a formal written apology from Dale. I expect a formal written apology from uh, Lemon No Alec Yo Boy and everyone else in the comment section who said, well, this is what you get for not employing a court physician, even though I didn't leave it in the video. Uh, I did, in fact, employ a court physician because it says right there, months of service, one. Immediately, the second the other physician died, I hired Raul. Raul was the best that we had. Now, his aptitude was poor. I'm sure it would have made no difference whatsoever. However, you need to give me more credit. <laughs> I understand that obviously it was open to debate because I didn't leave it in the video, but I was like, oh shit, I'm just gonna quickly deal with all of the court ranks and everything because it all kind of went to shit and that was one of them I did very, very quickly, I will admit. But I did hire the physician. I think it was just the fact that this guy had been so damaged by as many pieties. Uh, pieties? By as many pilgrimages for piety. I do think that Croissant will continue to uh, pursue... We'll continue to pursue what his father did, you know, I, and I, I almost feel like Croissant probably, uh, given that he was so young when his father died, when he actually is old enough to remember him and look back on things, he might not remember how much of a fucking blithering lunatic King Labaguette was. It might have all the positive connotations with none of the negative stuff, because, I mean, kids don't really, uh, aren't really attuned to that, right? They're not really so keenly, uh, acutely aware of mad parents. So we'll see where that goes. I think for the time being... Let's unpause and let's carry on with the education. I want to make sure, though, uh, before we do that, actually, who's your guardian? Who do we want to be your guardian? Hard choice. Um, bear in mind, this kid is being educated in intrigue because he had Rowdy, so he was pretty good at that. And Baguette was educating him. Baguette himself, of course, was educated in intrigue. So I feel like something along those lines would be good. This guy is well-educated, and he's very good at intrigue, so he might make for a good character to to educate. Um, we've got some other pilgrims here that also might be quite good. Deceitful, impatient, zealous. A zealous character might have some good leaning on, on the education, too. I'm really not sure who to go with, to be honest with you. Let's go with this 16 intrigue, though. 16 intrigue and also high learning. That's a nice combo. Now, really, you know I say we should always play the character. It's a big driving force. Really, right now, maybe we should be focusing a bit more from some of the meta aspects on what the mother would choose. Because this kid wouldn't be able to choose his own guardian, realistically. So I think we'll say that, that his mother, Cecilia, would recognize what a good educator this kid is, given that Baguette's already started that intrigue education. To swap now would be a pretty stupid and waste that opportunity. So we'll stick with that one. Um, what about religious of... Uh, of House Carling. Let's get you educated too. What are, you still haven't got a trait yet, actually. Princess Profiterol, though, does have Charming, which I think makes her good in... We could go Diplomacy or Intrigue with her as well. I think... Queen Mother Cecilia is educated in Diplomacy, so I think she would want to influence on that one. Maybe in a bit more of a positive way. You know, maybe the Queen Mother is acutely aware of the insanity and the plotting and the scheming, certainly being contributing slightly to uh, Baguette's downfall. So I think we're good with that. Maybe if we'd have focused less on plotting and more on eating a square meal, the guy wouldn't have been malnourished. So you then, tiny child. Uh, funnily enough, Nigel Debris, once again incredibly good. Arguably the best educator we've got. Fine, then. All right. They can both go to the same guardian. A little bit dangerous, but we'll see how it goes. And then we'll educate the other kid when they're of age. What can we do, then, for the time being, given that we're in a regency? Uh, not a lot. Now, this kid is friends with his mother, and, and they are both 
you know, very, very close characters. We can, of course, attempt to swing the scales and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I don't think we need to right now. She's selfless in her loyalty. And she absolutely loves her kid. Obviously, we want the kid to do well. Promote authority. Boost crown authority and council opinion of... Oh, it also has the chance of them leaving factions, which could be very good right now. Regent succession is affecting the, the obviously this balance on the scales there. This guy is self-interested because he has a low opinion of us. We can we can sort that out. You know, it gives us a really good goal for where we should start with a lot of our efforts. I think we're going to stick with promote authority, fill the coffers, maybe a little bit too risky, and also not really relevant right now. Now, from a from a meta thing, obviously we'll have to do this outside of the confines of the character here. We should crank up crown authority, and we should just revoke Pisa. I I, I think that Labaget wouldn't have done that because he's a lunatic, and wouldn't have been focused on these things. Simultaneously, we being in a regency right now, the council are going to want to consolidate power, and so is Cecilia. So I think cranking up Crown Authority is going to upset some of the... Va well, we've only got one vassal, of course. Um, but more importantly, we can revoke the title. So I think doing that immediately would be pretty good. Sharing power in an entrenched regency. Wow, what's the description on that one? If a regency lasts too long, it may become entrenched, and the regent becomes even more powerful compared to their liege. The benefits of the regent gets from the scales of power become much more powerful, so it's a good job they did become friends, specifically. Otherwise, that could have gone a bit weird. But yeah, no, this is, this is totally fine. This is absolutely fine. As long as we keep it low, and I presume she will attempt to keep it low... Given that she's selfless and likes us a lot, I think that's all good then, eh? What's this here? What does that mean? Is that a little plus? Oh, can construct building. That's what that means. Fair enough. Now, there was a bug. Uh, there was a bug, uh, like, a couple of episodes ago where we couldn't construct new holdings. Um, it turns out that was actually a base game bug. And it will say something like tribal, you know, you need a tribal holding or whatever. Basically, it didn't do anything. It just was that you didn't have any money. It was a tooltip error and it's since been patched out of the game. It wasn't actually a mod or anything like that, fortunately. So let's let some time tick and let's carry on then. We're immediately ill. Oh, fuck. Um, wow. That's a bloody good start. Okay. Ransom accepted. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, God. And we've still got a shit court physician. I promise he was the best person when I elected him, but we will double check. We might even want to... Can we search for a court physician at this point? I guess we'll do that instead. I didn't know if it was off of cooldown, but that's quite nice that it is. Um, we'll also search for a caravan master too and see if we can maybe, maybe even find a better educator. Not that there's anything wrong with our current guy, but we might as well go for gold, huh? Fine. Let's, um, what do you think? You're a child. You, you'll probably be fine. You're like old enough where you haven't really got to worry about these things. As much as I would love to play as religious. We, we, of course, have to play the character who's not just going to be like, yeah, no, I'll die so my younger brother can take over. Let's go for... Do no more than what is necessary. You're not really at that much of a risk. Hey, Raul. Managed to get success on reduced disease symptoms for one year. Thank you, fella. Right, we've got a couple of people we can potentially recruit here. Um, Aubrey is crap. Raymond is pretty good. Wow. Do we need a new steward urgently? Uh, yes, I would say that we do. Yeah, okay, Raymond... Uh, sorry, Aubrey, join me. He's very, very, very good. Let's... Oh, is he actually here yet? Well, we'll sort that in a second. Right, for court physician. Oh, my God, we've got someone with 26 intrigue. Bloody hell, you would make for a good educator. Holy shit. Um, and a good spy master on top of that. Augusta. Her aptitude is poor, but I'm thinking, like, what can she do elsewhere? We can gain 30 opinion of her. That will put her at plus 15. She'd make a good spy master. Certainly better... <laughs> than the spy master we've got currently. So let's have a fuck around with the council. Um, sorry, I got hiccups. I'm holding my breath to try and get it to stop. Listen to my words, children. Today I will tell you about God, heaven, hell, and even Satan himself. Dambert exclaims, fervor burning in his eyes. Me and the other children are spellbound by the sermon. Who knew that the scriptures could be this fascinating? Should we say... My belief in God will never fall to Dimebear. Now, that one, I think, suits the character best, given that he's been on many pilgrimages. His father achieved greatness through his piety, but, you know, died from, effectively, also those pilgrimages, too. We can either go for ambitious or zealous. This is a hard choice. Now, his father was ambitious and zealous. Honestly, I think that the zealotry suits him better, again, given the, the pilgrim trait. But maybe not as ambitious of his, as his father is, is maybe the right play. 
because his ambition is what killed him ultimately. Going on so many pilgrimages back to back to back before it healed or eaten food. <laughs> Regent Further's mandate. Oh, good. Um, change the opinion. Oh, of this guy by 50. Oh, actually, that's quite nice. 10 strife with Cecilia de Normandy's peer vassals. That's fine. Vassals are upset, but this guy likes us. Oh, we'll see how it goes. As I look upon a young scolder walking by, sweaty with labor, but a blush on her cheeks, I'm entranced. What is this feeling? The longing. Girls are so fascinating. You realize you're heterosexual. Or I know that she's only a commoner, but oh my heart. You realize it's heterosexual, and we get a crush on Alda Mode. Is she good? She's okay. Uh, I think we'll just say, you know, this kid is zealous. And, you know, he's, he's been a pilgrim before, and he's been paying attention to the scriptures. He will know that such things are sinful. And he's back to his old self. Maybe that's God rewarding us for being such a good, devoted little boy. He's very creepy looking, isn't he? But he is a chip off the old block. I think that's a great way to describe the kid. Ooh, Raul has impressed the Pope. Good God. Right, sorry, let's go back to the council. Losing court grandeur. We'll worry about that later. That's not such a big deal as far as I'm concerned. So then, Spymaster Augusta is uh, obviously fantastic. There she is, amazing. Can I sack the steward and replace it with the other person that we got? I can't, unfortunately. I don't know why, though. That's okay. Um, we'll swap you out anyway, because you're better. In terms of Marshall, Simon de Ren is nuts good, like insanely good. And then Raul, we can swap out for uh, Nigel. Nigel de Bries, courtier and guardian. A good upgrade across the board for the council there, and obviously keeps the council on side. If we're putting them in the position, they're going to get a nice opinion gain of that, huh? What's the Pope think of us, then? Plus 15 opinion. That's pretty good. This is, this is off to a, a pretty safe and nice start. Can we revoke this? I don't think we have uh, any ability to, unfortunately. Not without being a tyrant. Yeah, because we don't have a claim on it. We'll get the claim in a second, and we'll, we'll obviously go from there. That won't take too long, right? How long are we looking on that? Well, two years. That's all right. Yudes Carling died. Yudes Carling, I think, was another one of the many priests that this family has had. I don't think we'll worry about another caravan master. Let's disable that for the time being. Somebody. Oh, Serene Doge Tediche himself would like to pay us 25 gold to ransom a family member. Fine. Really, what I should have done is just released him to endear him to us, but we're going to get rid of him soon anyway, so I think it's probably an alright gamble. Elder Mode has been pestering me for a long time now. Many of the other children listened to her, and she used her influence to turn them against me. Not only that, she broke my favorite wooden sword. That newt. I can't get her to stop no matter what I do. She's the worst and becomes my bully, or we beat her senseless. Shit, there's 11% chance we might kill her. I'm going to pay you 5 gold to bog off. An irrational zealot. His character personality is irrational, and his archetype is warlike. Irrational zealot. Maybe he would beat her. I think we play what, what is written. He's irrational. I mean, what's more irrational than beating her up? I mean, she's a bully. That's not necessarily that irrational to beat her up. But if he kills her, it's an interesting story character development, if nothing else. You beat her senses, and she leaves you alone. Maybe actually not that... um. Not that bizarre after all. You are not yet an adult, but you are not betrothed. Good suggestion. Right, let's have a look then. Um, I, I think we saw by Alliance Power. We can marry our cousin, the Princess of England. That's a bit dodgy. Patrice de Canosa. It's the daughter of... Oh! The Duchess of Tuscany. That's pretty enormous. That could be good for us. That's, that's in our neighborhood too. You know, that's kind of in our... In our area. She's also quick. You know, that's not a bad marriage. I think we'll go with that. I think that's pretty good, actually. Alliance form with Duchess Matilda of Tuscany. Excellent, thank you. That actually works out really well. We could have married into England. We could probably just about... In fact, I think we've already got an alliance with England, haven't we? Um, yeah, King Robert Cathos of England, so we don't need to do that one. That's good. That's, that's two, like, pretty solid... Look at that. Two solid alliances there. Like, thousands and thousands of troops out of that one. Like, 10,000 close to troops. Very nice. Okay. Commander promoted. Hello. Um, sure, you're pretty good. You're strong. Stop breeding out courtiers. It's a Hastaluda. Man, we, I, I really can't wait to play a melee-based character so that we can really go through this. Like, you know, min-max it like crazy. Not necessarily min-max, of course. Play the character. Um, but, you know, do some do some pretty nice stuff with that. Can potentially ne negotiate an alliance with the Earl of Cornwall. Pretty irrelevant when we're allied to the King of England, right? Just like any of the children his age, my brother Rolly Juice sometimes lies and tests boundaries. However, he often avoids suspicion with his sweet demeanor. And people always see him when he gets caught. Oh, charming? Oh, okay. Another diplomat, potentially. Or 
we go for intrigue as well. Um, I think we'll go diplomacy for you. Again, I, I feel like the mother being uh, a diplomat herself and not pretty massive on intrigue, like a little bit because she's fickle. I feel like she would definitely want to influence him to be educated away from La Baguette's, uh stuff. Stuff that he had going on. Um, Augusta, absolutely nuts. Yeah, let's get you... Oh, no, 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 sorry. A diplomacy, not intrigue. Here, a, a, a knight, a trustworthy sir to educate him. While passing through the streets of my guardian Nigel, I came by a pillory. A man was stuck there begging for water or any kind of relief from his fate. Um, do we want to become arrogant? The criminal shouldn't even look at me. Are we getting some water from the well? Compassionate, which of course is virtuous to... Uh, Catholics, or we kick mud in his face, which is callous. And again, we got to find that nice middle ground, right? Between him being, he's an irrational zealot. He is a zealot, and I do think that would override everything else. I don't know if compassionate is necessarily good for an intrigue character. Actually, it's kind of shit for an intrigue character. But I feel like his zealotry would override everything else. So I'm gonna go for it, even though I think it will it will neuter the character a little tiny bit. Ooh. And then immediately, Robert Cathos of Normandy dies, and our alliance is over. <laughs> um, I presume you can't form an alliance with a cousin. That's a bit of a distant... Uh, that's a bit of a... Yeah, okay. Great-grandparents, grandparents, child's spouses, nieces, nephews, uncles, aunts. Yeah, unfortunately, it's like the furthest... It's the closest furthest away to do an alliance for. Nephew, nieces, fine cousin, one step too far, sadly. That's unfortunate. Okay, so we lost our big alliance there, but we still got another. It's not great. I'm a little bit annoyed by that, but that's all right. As the king, I don't get much time to myself. Minders and guards are everywhere, keeping me safe from both harm and any sense of fun. Finally, though, I've managed the lot. It took a little daring, but they don't know the route past the walls that I know. I won't use it too often, but when I do, all the vermandois stretches out before me. Freedom. Surely no one will ever find you this way. And we lose a little stress. That sounds a little dangerous too, but we'll see how it goes. Oh God, what happened to his mother? She's ill and she's a drunkard. Oh my God, was that after Baguette died? She turned to alcohol? They weren't uh, soulmates, were they? Cecilia and Baguette in the end. I don't think so. I don't remember them being that anyway. Um, yeah, that's a real shame. That is a real shame. Okay. Hello. Uh, 25 gold. Yes, I will take that, old vassal of mine, and I'll use that money to pay for a claim to revoke your title. Uh, oh, no, I became a blade master. That's kind of fun. We can sponsor somebody. Einar Hesby wants to write a book. He's a legendary man. I'm going to be honest. With the claim that we are about to fabricate, we're probably not going to be able to afford this book. So I'm going to hold off. We may also want to host a feast or whatever when this kid comes of age. So I think we're going to hold off. Though the book would be good. I think we'll wait and see. This kid's going to be a better martial character than he is an injury character. Oh, Lord. Okay. Hello. There's a tournament. Not that we can go to it. Oh, meet peers. Yeah, no, we should be doing that. You should notify me that when that's available. Um, Sure. Let's do it then. We haven't got to travel anyway. We don't really need a caravan master, but um, never mind. Tennis recreation. We can't change that one, unfortunately. That is it. 55 gold, and we're going to invite uh, Religious and Profiterol. Can we not invite anyone else? Oh, that's it. Because you're going to invite, well, the following people there, because we're such a small, independent realm. If we were still part of France, it might be different. Fine. Let's meet our peers in brackets. Our direct siblings? We do have a couple of situations here. My flexible mother potters around court aimlessly each day, making clear her yearning for a purpose I'm too busy to provide. I will find something for you to do, Mama. She will expect a court position in the next few months. Um, have you thought... I noticed them... G uh, gabbering around yesterday when I was doing the editing. I thought I was going mad and hearing the voices. Um, we can dedicate her to God. But because my character is compassionate, he'd be very upset about that. Um, sure, we'll find something for you to do, Mother. Court position? What, like make her a... Well, like, like a steward or something, I suppose. Not long ago, Sigismund was representing me on official business in the county of Vermandois. While there, he witnessed my petty official, Amar de Angoulême, harassing some peasants physically by pushing them around, trying to extort money from them. Angered by the injustice, Sigismund approached Amar, warning him to stop. He scoffed, assuming he was a nobody, until he realized he was my direct representative. To insult the king's representative is no laughing matter, and due to my many complaints about Amar, Sigismund has brought the fool to me for judgment. 
Um, strip him of his titles and imprison him. Ooh, for punishing a corrupt official. That seems like a good idea. Compassionate, after all. We've got to show compassion to uh, him, not by executing him, but show compassion to the people. Poor people he's been pushing around. And here we go. We're going to meet our peers, which are our direct siblings. So it's a bit weird, to be honest with you. Can we change the intent now? No, it's only recreation. Fair enough. Uh, let's see if we can do something for Cecilia, then. Can maybe make her a chancellor? She's not that good, but I did promise her a job. Oh, I can't even make her chancellor. Does she want like a maybe just like a different court, like an antiquarian? That would shut her up. We haven't got any uh... We haven't got anything to to help out with that, though. Like, like I haven't got any way to... There's, there's no artifacts that she would be repairing. Anyway, um, yeah, let's appoint you court juicer. That one actually is useful. Um, I can make her a food taster. High almoner? That seems like a good idea, because we're compassionate. That's actually a really good idea. Okay, um, why can I not sort by... It's very annoying I can't sort by... It's sort by aptitude rather than, um, you know, skills. There she is. Aptitude, terrible. Fine, we've given her a job. There, hopefully that'll keep her happy and quiet. My brother, Religious, has climbed the highest tree around and is gesturing, gesturing enthusiastically for me to follow. Uh, absolutely. 90% chance we managed to climb and increase our prowess by one. 10% chance we took a nasty fall and hurt. Either way, they're going to be friends and this kid's rowdy, so we would definitely do it. Oh, that's good. Nice work. And more importantly, it's Dumbear himself. Greetings, King Croissant of Pisa. I have prowled through documents both ancient and less certain provenance. I have found that you are the rightful lord of the Grand City of Pisa. Absolutely. 87 gold on that one. Bloody hell. We are down in cash. Why are we down in cash? What's happening? Where is all this money going? Oh, just court, court positions alone have, have dropped us that low, huh? Well, we'll deal with that in a moment, I suppose. Whoops. There's a pop up there I wanted to have a look at. Thank you. My brother Rolajus and I agree that trade is an important skill for a noble to learn. This this is a fetus. This This child is is barely sentient. It's a four-year-old. What do you mean we agree that trade is important? Fine, we only have pebbles for currency, but they are very shiny. Um, I would like to purchase a ware, please. We convince the merchant to trade. Ah, and impress our younger brother. That's nice, I like that. Um, you'll give me what I want, I'm a lord. Now he's compassionate. Oh, they set up their own stall. Ah. So merchants humor you and buy your pebbles with leaves. Oh, that's kind of fun. Um, I'm not sure which I prefer on this. I've been practicing trade for 10 years. Oh, that's good. Oh, there's a lot of stress. Um, sure, sure. Let's go for the top one then. I would like to purchase a ware. We convinced them and gave one stewardship. Very nice. That's a cool, cool little event chain. I like the idea that they can become friends and knit the family together a little bit. My brother, Religious, approaches me with a heap of fabric in his arms. He dumps it on the floor and it's a heap of clothing for adults. Let's play house together. We can say, oh, only if we're the parents. Very progressive. You grow closer to forming a friendship with Religious Carling. Sure. Or they can do chess, but they can't because he's rowdy. Yeah, let's do it then. Fine. Oh, God. And there's another sermon. Oh, but look at this. Listen to my words, children. Today I will tell you about God, heaven, hell, and Satan himself. Cecilia exclaims, further burning in her eyes. Me and the other children are spellbound by the sermon. Who knew the scriptures could be this fascinating? As the sermon ends, I have to tell Cecilia my thoughts. What was that about the divine right of kings? We become ambitious. A, a literal chip off the old block. We've got his ambition. We've got his zealotry. We've got compassion rather than lunacy. This is an improvement on La Baguette. In every way, my friends. Until next time, thank you for joining me, siblings. That's nice. They're getting quite close with their siblings. Look at that, 5144. And then Religious, I'm trying to click on him, but it's clicking through him to the map. Very frustrating. I'm trying to, trying to, excuse me, I'm trying to click my brother to see what he thinks of me. Hello. A hundred opinion. That's so nice. Man, this is, this is a, a nice change of pace. I, uh, the madness was fun for a while, but it's good to be a little wholesome. Maybe we'll go back to madness later on, though. Um... All of this is fairly irrelevant, right? So then, Pisa, let's have a chat. I would like to revoke your title of the Republic of Pisa. It's an act of tyranny. Why? We have a claim on it. No, we've got a claim on the Grand City of Pisa. We can't revoke that because it would make him hold only titles with no land. Interesting. So if we got to fabricate another claim on the duchy first before we can revoke it, I'm not sure. I guess we'll try. You have a claim on this county. Oh, shit. 
Well, that's fascinating. Uh, I, I would have to give him a different title before I can revoke Pisa. Are we going to have to go to war to get a different title to be able to give him a new one? I'm not sure. Your wife's hat is fantastic, though, sir. Oh, how odd. Okay, well, maybe that's exactly what we'll do then. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about that when we get there. After all, we're going to try and build the Holy See, S-E-E. -E, so we could go for Venice. We could go for... I mean, any of these islands in the Mediterranean. Maybe not getting involved in the politics of South Spain right now. I feel like that might be a bit of a holy war waiting to happen. Walking between audiences, I overhear my wise court physician, Augusta, discussing a latest flight of fancy. It's supposedly the strongest potion in existence and only comes from the furthest reaches of the world. Also, say the merchants and alchemists I've spoken to. Your strongest potion. I come for your strongest potion. I don't remember how the fucking meme goes now. What does he say in the video? Potion seller. I want only your strongest potion. No, we say it isn't fit for a beast, let alone a man. Um, all of these are going to stress him out. Oh, they have a potential to stress him out. The potion could be too strong for us, Traveler. 1% chance that he dies. Only God can dr grant us strength. Ah. Yeah, but we're ambitious, though. He wants to drink the potion. The other two stress him out because uh, he's ambitious and not doing it. This one will only stress him out if he fails and becomes unwell. Drink the potion, Traveler. What happened? What happened? It was! It was the strongest potion. This character has managed to handle the strongest of potions. For the next five years, we get prowess and a health boost. Very nice. Man, I've got a lot of high hopes for this character. Let's just hope this education goes well, because it, it seems to have all of the... All of the right building blocks. Brocks? All the right building blocks. My sister, Profiterol, sitting on the floor, surrounded by spilled paint and pieces of canvas for the third time this month. The courtiers whisper about her being an artistic genius in the making, but the servants complain about scrubbing the floors free of paint in the wake of her inspirations. No. We're compassionate, after all. Her genius will be nurtured. Absolutely, it shall. How could they even suggest such an awful thing for that poor child? To stifle her. Right, how's Vrela Juice coming along? Fantastic hair, by the way. Core grandeur has increased. Very nice. This kid's coming out really good. Maybe a bit of a natural steward there. Not bad in diplomacy, which is, of course, what he's being educated in. Would have liked that one to go a little bit better. Profiterol also coming out pretty well. Damn, they're both doing pretty good. We're doing fine. Good traits, but I'd like something a bit more. Uh, what have we got in here? Oh, nothing of value. Come closer. I have a story I wish to tell you. My mother, Cecilia, says, beckoning me towards the bonfire. It was a story of my friend Eremar when he was slain in a duel. Yes, my acquaintance. She brushes her blouse and continues to tell the story as the bonfire licks the night sky. Dear Croissant, do remember the moral of the story. Death comes for us all. Make sure it comes to your foes before it comes to you. What a story, Cecilia. Or... <laughs> um, obviously, we're friends with her. We respect her. We're compassionate. We know that, that this will make her happy to know that we're listening to her. What a story. We get either stewardship or intrigue. Come on, pray for intrigue. We did get intrigue. Very, very nice. That's what we like to see. Bringing it back. Bringing it back slowly but surely. A friend of wood. Friends are so fickle and prone to betrayal, but never has my dearest friend ever betrayed me. My favorite toy is more than just a toy to me. It's my best friend. Whether my guardian Nigel has been insisting I cast my best friend aside and spend time with real children. To be fair, you're 14. You shouldn't be talking to a wooden horse. Uh, I've never abandoned my friend. May lead to vengeful, forgiving, or shy. Or I guess I'm too old for him. We grow to hate the man. No, I feel like this is where his compassion would really come into play and say he will never abandon his best friend. He's too compassionate. He's grown too attached to this little wooden horsey. Let's see where that leads to. Interesting. Thankfully, Nigel has decided to spare my best friend and leave me to play and talk with him for another day. There was a moment where it looked like he was intent on murdering my best friend, but it seems he lives to see another day. Oh, that's good. I guess he isn't so bad after all, or I don't need anyone else. No. We've been shown an act of kindness and an act of compassion. And I think that would resonate with the character. Mainly because he too is compassionate. So we're going to grow close to forming a friendship with him. That's nice. I like that a lot. I find my brother Rilaju slumped in a faraway corner of Marl, gently weeping. As he takes notice of my approach, he gets up and dries, tries in futility to make his eyes dry up. Oh, brother, I shouldn't be crying. After all, you have more reason to miss our father than I do. I'll just get out of your way. In truth, I haven't had time to think about father since taking the throne, but Rilaju seems genuinely upset about it. Uh, let it out. I'm here. He becomes your friend, but we lose stress because we're rowdy. Uh, sorry, we gain stress because we're rowdy. Or we say, haha, what a big baby. 
we become his bully and we lose stress because we're compassionate. I think it's, uh, I mean, look, Rowdy is a childhood trait, whereas compassionate is a, is a long-term, you know, defining characteristic of him. He also likes Relajuice. Relajuice really, really looks up to his older brother. And honestly, Croissant likes Relajuice is pretty, pretty well too. And I think his compassion would overtake his childhood, you know, his childhood rowdiness. Let's go for it. It's stress either way. But look at that. We've made a friend. This is so wholesome. Oh, this is unbearably wholesome for Crusader King's story. I can't wait for them all to die in a manure-based explosion. We got taxes. Hey, good shit. Nice work. Sorry, I don't mean like good shit as in the manure again. Hello, what's happening here? We got an inspiration for uh, a tapestry. Considered a master. We'll look into it. By God, I love getting to explore Vermandois. Were it not for my secret path, the past the walls, I'd have never had an opportunity to spend this time away from my fussy guardians, let alone play like this. How would I get the chance to find a tree as big as this one, let alone climb it? Those bitty busybodies would never, never let me. It's quite a tall tree, isn't it? Just gotta be careful. 20% uh, chance we're able to climb down and suffer no permanent damage, and 80% chance we're becoming capable for the rest of our lives. It doesn't look so high. 60% chance we climb down and suffer no permanent damage. 40% chance we become permanently incapable for the rest of our lives. This fucking sucks. Wow, you're telling me that... A 40% chance that this character is ruined forever and we then have to play in a Regency for the next God knows how long. That sucks. I mean, hopefully he'd just die at that point. It's a severe health penalty, so maybe then Relajuice would take over. I guess we we will roll the dice. We've got a 40% chance here of this character being done forever. Wow. We climb down and suffer no permanent damage. That was close. That was really bloody close. Guilt and shame have been plaguing me as of late. All my sins, my flaws, my failings, these dark thoughts distract me from my responsibilities and keep me awake at night. Shall we become a flagellant and wounded? Shall we donate to charity and become improvident? Oh. Or do we stay strong and resist the impulses? This is first ever mental breakdown. I think you just take on the stress, you take the L, and we move on. And we just know that, you know, it's not going to last forever. You've only got a little bit more education. We'll have a feast. You're in charge then. You're out of the Regency. The world's your oyster. You've just got to grit your teeth and bear it a little bit longer, right? This is where the ambition starts to be a pain in the ass. See the implacable King Croissant on Pisa. I call you to honor our alliance and join me in the Genoese to Jaw War for the County of Parma. Absolutely. Absolutely, we will join you in that one. That should be fairly easy. I've just raised the troops in the wrong part of the realm. <laughs> That's the problem, with, the problem with the main part of the realm being nowhere near the capital, right? Let's raise the troops here and try that again. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can. We'll try and help out here and there. Maybe we could grab some land from Genoa. That would be an alright idea. Can I, like, just link my army? There you go. Just attach them and just leave them to do whatever they want to do, I think. We can meet our peers again, and I'm going to try and squeeze this in before the guy turns 16. And the peers are, of course, going to be... Oh, what happened? We gained the trait Intricate Webweaver. Damn! That was unexpected. With the help of Nigel, I've completed my studies of intrigue. Even if the highest aspects elude me, I've lived up to everyone's expectations and learned more than most. As I was taking my first steps into adulthood, I found myself reminiscing about some of the people who made an impact on the man I've become. The friendships I've shared with Relajus meant a lot to me as we were both young, and to still have him by my side means a lot. You're a man now. Holy shit. Intricate Webweaver was not what I was expecting with that. Still rowdy. Does that... Uh, is that the same as CK2? I don't remember where it flips into an adulthood trait soon. Either way, we just lose the trait, Rowdy. Oh, it just disappears. Well, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. Sorry, where did that event go? Hey, come back here. My sister and I, Profitter, are watching some peasants train, and they approach us with a smile. What do you say, children? Think you can handle the basics? Absolutely, we can. And we're ambitious. We should always try and take it on. 80% uh, chance we increase prowess, and we absolutely do. I thought my sister Profiserol and the peasant girl were merely pretending to fight, but suddenly there is blood in the dirt. Profiserol hits the ground with a grunt, and the peasant standing above her, above her moves to attack again. Obviously, save her. There's a chance. Oh, no, it's guaranteed. Look at this. We move in to help her. And he is now friends with both of his siblings. That's so good. My cousin Adele has been showing signs of pregnancy. How could she? And we've got a new commander called Guido, who is actually pretty damn good. Welcome. Man, this is so nice. You rescued Profiterol Carling from a cupboard. Well, that's good. 
My sister and friend, Professor Roll, approached me with a heap of fabric. We are going to play house together. But only if we're the parents. Very Crusader Kings. And we've done it. Until next time. We got one prowess out of that for 55 gold. But more importantly, all of the siblings are friends. I like that a lot. That's such a nice story element. Out of such madness and insanity came some real nice relationships. And I think that's, I think that's pretty great. I'm, I'm actually liking this a lot. Let's start down the intrigue tree then. And I think, much like his father did... Maybe going out of his way to punish sinners. Maybe not to the same level of zeal and borderline uh, madness. Although it was real madness with Lava Get, of course. But being able to maybe go for like intimidation and keep the sinners in line. But he's compassionate though. This is the problem. A compassionate intro character always is weird to try and play. Maybe you do it to try and stop harm coming to others. That, I guess, is how you'd have to play it. All right, I'm all right with that. I'm fine with that. We'll, we'll roll with it and see what happens. We can now hold court, but you know what? I'm going to leave it there for today. Apologize about this episode being late. Rim Rim took forever to record. Also had to do some medical stuff. Bit of a pain in the ass. But here we are. I think it's a great place to bookmark it. Let me know what direction you think we should take King Croissant now that we've got full control of him. Very good entry character. Not as good as his father, but he's got a long way to go. Bear in mind, his father had schema and all those other benefits and, and a whole life's worth of experience. This kid has a lot of potential. And has done a lot of already really interesting, cool stuff. So, let's see where it goes. Open to suggestions. Come back tomorrow.